please welcome Dr. John Conhos to speak on Vedic Organic Nepal, creating sustainable economic development through Maharshi's Vedic Organic Agriculture and Environmental Management. It's my great joy to welcome a great Vedic scholar and great seer of Vedic Organic Agriculture, Dr. John Conhos. Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshvara, Guru Sakshat Param Brahma, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. <laughs> Respected Swamis, Acharyas, friends and colleagues, I want to share the sentiment expressed by other international speakers of how much we're enjoying Nepal. We like Nepal's people, its culture, and its environment. We love the Himalayas. It's a very precious nation, Nepal. And today I want to give you a precious gift from Maharshi. It's the knowledge of Vedic organic agriculture, Maharshi Vedic organic agriculture. Dr. Fagan gave a lot of the practical values of Vedic organic agriculture, but I want to give you more of the Vedic knowledge on which it's based, so you can see the deep tradition from which this knowledge comes. This Maharshi Vedic organic agriculture is Maharshi's unique cognition. This is not knowledge that's available outside of this Nepal organization. It's Maharshi's cognition of how man relates to nature and how the two together result in successful agriculture. Maharshi's agriculture, Vedic agriculture, is not about techniques of growing. It's not about creating fertilizers or it's not about how to plow the field. These are traditional practices which you have already. Maharshi's agriculture is a truly consciousness-based or Vedic-based agriculture, creating a new relationship between man and nature for successful agriculture. So Nepal is a Vedic nation, and Nepal is an agricultural nation. So when we put the two together, we get Vedic agriculture. It's the perfect place to do this. And the picture that I've started with shows Maharshi's willingness and enthusiasm for bringing Vedic knowledge to Nepal. I'm speaking today on behalf of the Nepal Vedic Foundation and also Maharshi Vedic Organic Agriculture Institute, which has been founded in America, in India, and Australia, and hopefully very soon with Deepak's blessing in Nepal. And the topic is sustainable development and environmental preservation through Vedic agriculture. Maharshi's the founder and he's part of a tradition. Now, when Maharshi first brought out this knowledge, he called me one day and said he wanted to bring out the knowledge of Vedic agriculture. Now, I was quite surprised to hear Maharshi put the word Vedic and agriculture side by side because Vedic has to do with spiritual side of life. Agriculture has to do with the material side of life. But Maharshi wanted to bring them together. And he said, actually, Vedic agriculture is the highest expression of Vedic knowledge. Now this is amazing. We have Upanishads, the Vedanta, we have all these different branches of the Vedic knowledge, 
But Maharshi said that Vedic agriculture is actually the highest knowledge in the Vedic sphere. And here's why. When we think about Atma or consciousness, we can say that it sequentially unfolds, it elaborates, it grows. And the first expression of Atma is Ved. Ved is just vibrating Atma, vibrating consciousness. So this is the first expression. And then we know from Raja Ram's research that the Ved contains the intelligence or knowledge necessary to form the human physiology. So there's a direct link between Ved and physiology. Physiology is a more elaborated version of Ved, like the seed and the tree. The seed and the tree have the same genetics, but the seed is a compact version and the tree is a full version. And Vedic agriculture is performed in the field of the Vishwa here. So Vedic agriculture represents the full elaboration of Atma through Ved, Sharir, and Vishwa. And therefore, it's the most complete expression of Vedic knowledge. So the custodians of Vedic agriculture in Nepal will actually be custodians of Vedic knowledge. The expression in Sanskrit, yata pinde tata brahmande. As in the individual, so in the larger environment. This is the basis of Vedic agriculture. Vedic farmer, the individual, Vedic environment, yata pinde tata brahmande. Now, Maharshi gave another phrase. I call it the Maharshi Krishi Sutra. Maharshi Krishi Sutra. It's one phrase which explains the whole value of Vedic agriculture. Agreeing with the culturing intelligence of total natural law. Okay? So what does the word agreeing imply? If we're agreeing with something, it means we have a relationship with it. We have a harmonious relationship. We share understanding. We share values. So when we say agriculture is agreeing with natural law, it means we're establishing a relationship where the farmer is in a good, harmonious connection to nature, to natural law. And it's not just natural law, it's total natural law. It's the full range of natural law. It's the full range of Vedic knowledge. The farmer is attuning himself to the full range of Vedic knowledge. And it's a special quality, the evolutionary or the quali culturing quality. It's really reconnecting man and nature from their common source in Atma. So this is the essence of Vedic agriculture. It's not how to plant seeds. It's how to reconnect man to his own inner nature, which is the nature of the environment. It's the same nature. This is expressed in this, in this Dhamru, where you see that diversity converges to unity and then reemerges as diversity. This is the basic process of evolution. In Vedic agriculture, we take agriculture in its diversity, we bring it in tune with the culturing intelligence of natural law, and then it emerges as Vedic agriculture. Here it is expressed in the life of a tree. The tree converges to the seed and reemerges as the tree. Now I want to tell you a story and I'm going to ask for translation for this story simply because it's one story that contains the essence of Vedic agriculture. And if you don't get anything else out of the talk today, remember this story, okay? It's a story from the Srimad Bhagavatam, okay? The story of Lord Krishna. And the Bhagavatam you know, I mean the Bhagavatam is a Puran, and the Puran you know takes the Vedic knowledge and puts it in story form. So it's easy to remember. Instead of abstract philosophy, it's simple stories, but it's the same thing. So this is the story of, I'll pause every two seconds.
This is the story of King Prithu, who's the father of Vedic agriculture. Okay. King Prithu. 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 Huh? Okay. राजा प्रीतु को कथा जोन बैदिक कृषि संघ संबंधित था वहाँ ले बनना जाने वाले सर। When King Prithu came to power, when he became king, he राजा little I'll do a little more. When King Prithu came to power, when he became king, his whole country was in poverty. There was a severe drought, and all of the food grains had been withdrawn by Mother Earth. राजा प्रीतु सत्ता में आए पची आमदा खेरी राज्य भरी एकदम ही खड़ेरी पर रह खाद्यन्न उत्पादन होने सके ना एकदम ही समस्या उत्पन्न भाई कुछ हो। So राजा प्रीतु heard the cries of his people, we don't have any food, save us। अन्य जनता और ले भाने सन कि आमिल संग खाने को रखे ही सही ना आमिल जसरी पने आम्रो जीवन उद्धार करने पर बचाऊन पर आमिल। So राजा प्रीतु took his bow and arrow. <coughs> and decided to go and meet Mother Earth and challenge her. Ani Dharti Matalai Bhetna Banara Raja Prithu Janova is a Samadhan Khosnagolagi. Mother Earth took the form of a cow and started to run. She started to run. run. <coughs> Ani Mother Earth Le Gaiko Rupliera Dona Surugarnovaisa. And King Prithu chased her. Ani Raja Le Laharde Gwaisan. And he said, if you don't give back the food to my people, I'm going to dispatch you with my bow and arrow to the netherworld. And Mother Earth said, be careful. All of your people live on my surface. All of your people have your life on me. You better be careful about what you do. अनि मदर अर्थले धरती माताले भन्नु भएछ कि ये महाराज तपन एकदम होशियार हुनु पर्छ किन भने जनता अरुले मबाटे खाने कुरारु ली रहेका उनसन. But now here, Mother Earth gives him the essential knowledge. She says, "आम धरती माताले वाले ये उडा अतिन्ते आधारभूत ज्ञान दिन उनसारे वाले के बन्नु दरेछ." The reason that I have withdrawn the food from the surface of the earth is because it says in our Vedic scriptures it's a sin to feed the wicked. The adharmic, the wicked people. Adharmic. Adharmic, yeah. Yeah, so Mother Earth said I've withdrawn the food because it says in the Vedic scriptures it's a sin. It's a mistake to feed wicked people, to feed adharmic people. मैले जून खाद्यन्न धरती माता बाटा धरती बाटा लिए कोचु त्यो दुष्ट मानसे और लाई खोनु सही नरामरो उनसा बनेरा बन्नु बाई सा साफ उनसा बनेरा बन्नु बाई सा. But Mother Earth said, if you restore dharma, if you restore the practice of dharma, dhyan, samadhi, the three essential values of yoga. If you restore these to your people, I will immediately return the food. यदि तिमिले ध्यान धारणा समाधि को अभ्यास करने पालन करने हो बने मोतियों खाने को रा फर्क आए दिन चु बनेरा बन्नु बाईस. So King Prithu took each part of his population, just like Deepak is going to do, and taught them dharma dhyan samadhi. Today we call dharma dhyan samadhi Maharshi's transcendental meditation and TM City program. अनि वाले बनु बस जसरी दीपक जी बोले ध्यान धारणा समाधि को कार्यक्रम सिखाऊं दे जानू बाकी सा तीस तय कर रा राजा प्रीतु लाई वाले बनु बस ती बोले जनता और लाई ध्यान धारणा समाधि सिखाऊं ऊपर सा सो दैट्स द एसेंस ऑफ वैदिक एग्रीकल्चर यही वैदिक कृषि को आधारभूत सिद्धांत रहे सा इफ मैन इज इन ट्यून व then the earth responds favorably and blesses mankind with affluence. यदि मनुष्य ले प्रकृति सम्मत तरीका ले आगाडी बढ़ाने बने उन्हें हर लाई प्रकृति को आशीर्वाद बरदान प्राप्त होने से। 
that's why the, the first and foremost technology of Vedic agriculture is the reestablishment of Dharma through these technologies of consciousness. In a Chetanaka Pravidiru, the Handharana Samadhi Bada, Vedic Krishiko of the Harana is tapi the Bayagosa. Okay, now, is this story relevant today or is it just an old story? Is there any scientific basis to this story? Are we having an increase in natural disasters in the last years? What's the reason? Now, I'm going to show you, this is a dynamic graph that shows the relative temperature changes in the last uh, 100 years, or from 1900 to 2016. The center in the, the circle in the center, you'll see the year changing. And all around the circle is the 192 countries of the world, okay? And if the, if the color is yellow or blue, the average temperature is below average. The temperature that year is below average. If it's red or orange, the temperature is higher than average. Now watch what happened since 1900 in terms of the change in temperatures in each country. You see, it's fairly normal at this point. Sometimes warmer, sometimes colder. But now look what's starting to happen yellow and red. Pretty, pretty bad story. By year 200, 2016, nearly every country in the world was experiencing significantly elevated temperatures. What's going to happen from that? Violating natural law. This temperature increase is due to violation of natural law. Man is not taking care of the soil, the air, the water. They're getting polluted. In the last 10 years, there have been 260 major natural disasters each year with an average annual economic loss of $211 billion with 76,000 lives lost. That means in five years, $1 trillion was lost as a result of economic disasters. And 76% of these are weather related, which means the imbalance that's there. This is what happened when Mother Earth withdrew the food. Mother Earth is still alive today. And as, as Roger Fagan said, she will withdraw the food if we don't have proper practices. And that's why we say in Vedic agriculture, all agricultural programs must address human interaction and intervention in the natural environment and offer programs to help man act in accord with natural law, not against it. Our survival depends upon it. Maharshi Vedic Organic Agriculture with its technologies of consciousness and its Ashta Prakriti Yagya program is the most viable and time-tested solution to bring to removing environmental imbalance and bringing full support of nature. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of the theoretical background now of Vedic agriculture. How is nature structured? Okay? Increases in society. <laughs> Now, I want to give you a beautiful example that just happened. Even when we talk about Vedic agriculture, Dharma increases. It says in the Ayurvedic tradition, which is part of the Vedic tradition, we should eat our lunch in the middle of the Pitakala. The Pitakala. The Pitakala is the time from 10 o'clock 
until 2 o'clock. Ayurveda ma pitta ko color lai 10 baje dehi le ra 2 baje samma ko samay bhitra pitta ko color honcha banana banana. So in Ayurveda, 12 noon is the best time to eat lunch. Tese le diuso 12 baje din ko lunch karu pramuk bhojan karu atente labdaay honcha. It's good for digestion. Amros digestive system or pathan pranali ko lagi atte dik ramro honcha. Because pitta is very strong. Now the electricity went off today at 12.15. The electricity went off. And we had to go to lunch, right? I mean lunch my dhanaparo. But <laughs> but it gets better. It gets better. <laughs> The electricity went off at 12.15, okay? Yeah. Now, 12 o'clock by man-made clock is not exactly the time when the sun is directly overhead. That's called solar noon. Solar noon. Solar noon. Noon, noon, 12 o'clock. Solar, 12 o'clock. When the sun is directly overhead. Guess what time solar noon was today in Kathmandu? Guess what time solar noon was today in Kathmandu? Yes, yes. Yale Anuman Garasakunsa. 12.15. So this, the power went off exactly at solar noon. So we had the most dharmic lunch possible. Could I have the video? Okay. Um, I'm going to explain now how Vedic agriculture works. Okay, that's great. So yesterday we had a brilliant lecture from Dr. Hagelin. And for those who attended, he explained how the modern science explanation of how nature is structured is exactly parallel to the one in ancient Vedic science. Okay? I'm going to play a short video and it shows you how creation is structured from modern science. We have a grain of sand and in that sand is an atom and in that atom is subatomic particles. Now watch. Inside every grain of sand are billions of... Screen, screen, screen. Hmm, this is Mount Kailash now, we don't know why. Okay. Okay, so watch this video. Sound? Sound? Okay, it's, it's showing that these are smaller and smaller particles. These are called quarks. But now quantum theory says that everything is made up of these vibrating strings, which Dr. Hagelin explained yesterday. It's okay, it's okay, it's over. 
the point of the tape, I'm sorry the sound wasn't there, but the point it showed that modern science is saying that everything in creation is the reverberation of the unified field of natural law. In Vedic science, we're going to conclude that everything is a reverberation of Atma. And you'll see the parallel structures. Here's the key verse from the Bhagavad Gita. Vumir aponalo vayu kam mano buddhir evacha. Ahankara ityam me bhinna prakritir ashtada. This is Lord Krishna speaking. And he's saying, I'm the absolute, but my divided nature is eightfold. And this is the structure that Maharshi chose to design the yagyas for Vedic agriculture because it's the most fundamental structure in Vedic science. This is a quote from Maharshi. These eight values are to be known. Infinity within itself unfolds its inner content of eight. What are these eight? We understand them in terms of the field of total knowledge. These are the eight qualities of dynamism. Each dynamic value is part of a holistic value. Now, the way we use the Prakritis is very significant. Each Prakriti, whether it's Bhumi, or Appa, or Agni, or Vayu, now these are not, um, Bhumi doesn't mean physical earth. It's not physical. It's an intelligence, a principle of intelligence. So Bhumi is responsible for structure. And the laws of nature that surround Bhumi always have to do with structure. Let me show you how it works. Within Atma itself, there are eight swaras. Eight swaras arise from the fundamental vibration of Atma. A, I, U, R, R, A, O, Um. These are eight swaras or vowels. Each swara has a prakriti associated with it. For example, A has Bhumi prakriti. Apaha has, E has Apaha prakriti. U has Agni prakriti. Now the purpose here is just to show you that these eight principles are the same everywhere in creation, at the most fundamental level and at all express levels. So let me say it again. These eight prakritis are the organizing intelligence. And they are found at every level of creation. They're found within Atma. And atma, in Atma, they're found as the Swaras. Now, they're found in the structure of the Ved. This is the first richa of Mandala 1. Agni Mile Puro Itam. Eight syllables, eight aksharas. Okay? So the structure of the Prakritis is in the Ved. Here it is in the mandalas. These are the eight mandalas that surround the first and tenth mandala. So the structure of Ashta Prakriti is in the Ved. Now here's where it gets interesting. The Ashta Prakriti are in the plant kingdom. So Bhumi Prakriti forms all structural elements. So the trunk, the roots. Okay. Apaha is responsible for the fluid systems, the flow of sap in the tree. Agni is responsible for photosynthesis. Vayu for respiration. You know, the plant, the plant breathes oxygen and carbon dioxide and in and out through the leaves. Akasha is responsible for how the tree grows in space. Manas is associated with the awareness of external cycles in nature that all plants have. 
त्यो मानसले बाहिर को कसरी विकास हुन्छ भन्ने कुरा देखाउँछ बुडी इज रिस्पोन्सिबल फर द नेक्स्ट जेनेरेसन फ्रम द प्रिभियस जेनेरेसन पहिलो जेनेरेसनबाट अर्को सन्ततिमा कसरी जान्छ भन्ने कुरा बुद्धिले देखाउँछ एन्ड अहंकारा इज द न्यू सी अहंकारले नयाँ बिउ देखाउँछ प्रस्फुटन गर्दछ सो हियर इज द मेन पोइन्ट प्रमुख कुरा यहाँ आउँदैछ इफ वी क्यान कन्ट्रोल द प्रकृतिज थ्रु यज्ञ we can control all of the health and life of the plants yagya marfat jab hami prakriti lai niyantran garna sikchau tes pachi hami sampurna vriksha ko niyantran garna sakchau that's right so in vedic agriculture we handle the plants through the ashta prakritis now interestingly the same eight prakritis are in the life of the birds and the animals and in humans okay because these are the fundamental organizing dynamics in nature so here in the bird the bones the structure of the bones is prithivi the circulation from the heart is um vayu the digestion agni the same as in the plants it's in the animals the same in the cows the same in the mammals and most interest, interestingly the same in humans so agni is digestion the flow of the blood is by is apaha apaha is the flow of the blood in the urine etc so what do you imagine we can do here now by handling the eight prakritis आठ प्रकृतिलाई व्यवस्थापन कसरी गर्ने हामी यो सिक्छौ हियर्स हाउ वैदिक फूड वर्क्स यही त्यो वैदिक तत्वले काम गरेको हुन्छ वी ब्यालेन्स द प्रकृतिज इन द प्लान्ट्स हामीले बिरुवामा प्रकृतिलाई सन्तुलन ल्याउँछौ एन्ड देन द प्लान्ट्स बिकम परफेक्टली हार्मोनियस एन्ड अकोर्ड विथ नेचुरल ल र बिरुवाले चाहिँ प्रकृतिको नियम अनुसार मिलेर काम गर्न थाल्छ देन व्हेन वी ईट दोज प्लान्ट्स व्हेन वी ईट वैदिक फूड जब हम बिरुवाला खाँच अथवा वैदिक खाना खाँचिकलीमन बॉडी गेट बैलेंस मानव शरीर का सब आठवटा प्रकृति तत्व तो सन्तुलन में काम करना सुरू कर इट्स अ वे अफ क्रिएटिंग वैदिक लाइफ थ्रू फूड इसी खानेकुरा हम वैदिक जिंदगी निर्माण कर इंट्रेस्टिंग यू अल नो वट प्रसाद इज ओके यहाँ सब प्रसाद यज्ञ हरेकले यज्ञ गरेपछि प्रसाद खान मन गर्नुहुन्छ बिकज वी आर डुइंग दिस यज्ञस फर द होल फार्म किनभने यो यज्ञ सम्पूर्ण रूपहरुमा प्रसारित भएको हुन्छ ओर द होल कन्ट्री अफ नेपाल अथवा सम्पूर्ण नेपाल भरि फैलिएको हुन्छ ऑल अफ द फूड फ्रॉम द पाव विल बी प्रसाद नेपालको सबै खानेकुरा प्रसाद हुन्छ ओके ओके Now I just want to say a, a few points about what Vedic adds to organic. Rajan John gave a beautiful presentation on the value of organic. It's organic khane kura ma ved le kasari ke mahatva diyeko huncha wahale batau nuncha. This is a little repeat but Vedic agriculture is concerned with the link between man and nature. Vedic krishi manushya ra प्रकृतिको सत्तासँग जोडिएको हुन्छ सो इन वैदिक एग्रीकल्चर वी गेट अ कनेक्शन टु नेचुरल ल त्यसैले वैदिक कृषिमा हामी प्रकृतिको नियमसँग आबद्ध हुन्छौ एन्ड देन व्हाट ह्यापेन्स वी गेन द सपोर्ट अफ नेचुरल ल र त्यसपछि के हुन्छ भने हामीले प्रकृतिको सहयोग पाउँछौ एन्ड अनदर पोइन्ट आई वांट टु एम्फसाइज इज द वैदिक पार्ट अफ वैदिक एग्रीकल्चर डज नॉट कंसर्न how we plant the seed how we make the fertilizer how we plow the field these are all in organic agriculture vedic is just dealing with knowledge with vay vedic part ma hami kasari ropchau kasari kaatchau kasari fasal banauchau bhanne kura sambandha hudaina yesma chai gyan huncha that's why vedic agriculture is universal knowledge every country can practice vedic agriculture tesaile vedic krishi bhaneko हरेक मुलुकहरुमा अभ्यास गर्न सकिन्छ ऑल कल्चर्स ऑल प्लेसेस ऑल एनवायरमेंट्स 
सब संस्कृति में सब पर्यावरण में सब भूगोल सब क्षेत्र में इस लागू कर सकता क्योंकि वेद जहाँ तलब्ध हो सो वी से महर्षि वैदिक एग्रिकल्चर इज द मदर एंड ऑर्गेनिक एग्रिकल्चर इज द चिल्ड्रन तेल महर्षि वैदिक एग्रिकल्चर मदर होने ऑर्गेनिक एग्रिकल्चर से इसको बच्चा हो If the children don't have a mother, they remain unnourished. जब बच्चा हो रही आमा पाऊं देने उन्हें और ले दुखा पाऊं सं. If the mother without a children remains unfulfilled. तो बिना आमा को बच्चा बच्ची औरू अधूरा उन्हें सं. तू हो रहा उन्हें सं. Now because of time, I'm going to skip the next section because Raja John did it very nicely. The procedures, the procedures of Vedic agriculture are primarily transcendental meditation. The TM City program and Vedic Yagya. र समय को कारण लेकर था मैं इसलाय skip करने चाहूँ चु राजा जॉन फेगन ले इसलाय भावाती ध्यान सम्मत संबंध धमाल लिया रे बैखा करने होने से. But I do want to say something about the Yagya program. तर मैं ले यज्ञ कार्यक्रम के बारे में यज्ञ अनुष्ठान के बारे में क्या बताऊँ चाहूँ चु. These are the eight sense scars in the life of a plant. बिरुवा को जिंदगी में ये आठ होड़ा संस्कार और उन लाइक ह्यूमंस हैव सिक्सटीन संस्कार जैसे मनु जैसे ये मनुष्य का सोरा वाटा संस्कार होने चाहिए एट ईच स्टेज द सीड द स्वॉलन सीड द स्प्राउट द यंग प्लांट वी डू अ यज्ञ वी डू अ स्पेसिफिक यज्ञ रे ऐसे ही ये ता देखी उता उधे ही जानता खेरी आमी इन्हीं और को लाग At that stage in the life of a plant, just like with our children, we do the yagyas to enliven natural law. जैसे ये बच्चा लाये हमें यज्ञ करता है ये उन्हें और विकसित होने चाहिए तेस्ते यज्ञ करता है ये इन्हें और सभी सकारात्मक तरीके से प्रभावित भर विकसित होने चाहिए। They are the Vedic pundits doing these yagyas in the greenhouses in USA. अमेरिका को ग्रीनहाउस में वैदिक पंडित और ले अनुष्ठान घर को दृश्य हो रहे हैं। The most important point about yagya. महत्वपूर्ण कुरा यज्ञ में क्या होना चाहिए? Is that the pundits must perform from the level of para. पंडित हरुले जेले पनी अनुष्ठान कर दाखिली यो परा को भावातीत सत्ता बाटा काम करनो पर नहीं चाहिए. The pundits are only aware of the bikeri level. The yagyas will not work. बाइकरी अथवा बाइरो को सत्ता बाटा उन्हें वाले अनुष्ठान करे बनी तो इसको प्रभाव राम राम होता है ना. But when their recitation is connected to the para and pashanti level. They bring all the power of Atma out into the yagya. उन्हें और ये मंत्र हरु प्रस्तुत करना खेरी यो परा बाटा करना खेरी एकदम ही शक्तिशाली रूप में तेरे उसको प्रभाव आऊँ सब ने माथे बाटा आऊँ देना. Okay, so two minutes on Vedic food and then we have to close. वैदिक खाने को राहुल मत जमा दो ही मिनट. Here's this. Here's a Hindi saying that the farmers in India say. Jaisa kave an, vaisa bane man. Hindi ko kaha hoti hain le sundh bala, jaisa jasto khanun sa, tiyashta hi bannu hun sa. Jaisa kave an na, vaisa hoi man na. The mind depends on the quality of food. Hami le khane khane kura ko gund ma, amro man le kaam garne prakriya nirbhar gar sa. Bad food, bad thinking. Kharaab khana, kharaab soch bichar. Vedic food, Vedic thinking. Vedic khane kura, Vedic soch. Here's an even more important one from the Ramayana, Yad Anaha. Purusho Bhavati Tad Anastasya Devata यो रामायण को अभी व्यक्ति हो यो जस्तो मनुष्य ले The food that man eats his devatas eat जोन मनुष्य ले खान सन उन्हें तीन ही कुरारु देवता और ले खान सन Raja Ram has proven that the devatas are within us so if you eat food the Shiva and Vishnu values in you eat that food Raja Ram ले देहानु बाको सा वहाँ को ह्यूमन फिजियोलॉजी इन रामेंद्र में कि आमिल जोन खाना खान सों तो आमिल भीतर का देवता आरु जो भीतर शरीर भीतर रहने उनसा वहाँ ले पनी तेरी खाने उनसा। Okay, here's a summary. यहाँ चाहे सम निचोड़ दिए कुछ ऐसा भाई को। This is what Vedic agriculture will do for Nepal. नेपाल को लागी यही वैदिक एग्रीकल्चर ले करने सा यहाँ पॉइंट में दिए उसा। You can just read it. Yeah. य निश्चित सुनिश्चित कर सा तेज को स्थायित्व और तेज को समायोजन करने उनसा तेज ते आर्थिक विकास ला सहायक कर सा गरीबी निवारण कर सा और नेपाल ला ये वड़ा 
अंतरराष्ट्रीय स्तर में खाद्यान्न सप्लाई करने एटा स्थान को रूप में स्थापित करद जहाँ विशुद्ध खानेकुरा अर्गनिक खानेकुरा रहने तस्ते कर इसलिए सांस्कृतिक एकत्व सहयोग करने वैदिक धरोहर नेपाल वैदिक धरोहर सहयोग करने अंतिम छजिक स्थायित्व तो इसलिए प्रदान कर इसको मध्यम चाह ग्रामीण विकास मार्फत इसलिए किसान कृषक सामाजिक स्वास्थ्य का फायदा इसलिए उपलब्ध कराँच तस्त पर्यावरण इसलिए प्रमोशन करषि कृषि क्रियाकलापला इसलिए समुन्नत बना तस्त वैदिक पर्यटन इसलिए प्रवर्धन कर दिगो दिगो रूप में इसलिए नेतृत्व कर सकने बनाने होते कर गुरुकूल रैदिक पंडित इसलिए सहयोग करने एकदम व्यावसायिक रूप में अगड़ी कर जान बढ़ना को सहयोग तस्त अंतरराष्ट्रीय लगानीकर्ता इसलिए सहयोग करने तो सहयोग पाने होते करा आदर्श राष्ट्र बना रु अरु यो भन्दा पनि साना मुलुकहरुलाई त यसलाई अनुसरण गर्नको लागि प्रेरित गर्छ सो डाक्टर जन एन्ड आई आर ऑन मन्डे प्रेजेंटिंग टु द मिनिस्ट्री अफ एग्रीकल्चर टु सी इफ दे विल एक्सेप्ट आवर प्रपोजल टु मेक नेपाल वैदिक अर्गानिक ओके र नेपाललाई अब वैदिक अर्गानिक बनाउनको लागि अब आउने प्रस्तुति जन फेगनले दिनुहुनेछ थ्यांक यू फर लिसनिंग यहाँहरुलाई धेरै धेरै धन्यवाद Please give all your support to Deepak in accomplishing this.